Welcome to this Excel video. What we're going to be looking at today is probably the most uh, fantastic function that I've learned and now used for the last couple of years. It's not an easy one, it, it involves quite a bit of stuff. Uh, it's built around the index function, but it contains uh, the use of a couple of other functions inside it. But anyway, what it's useful for is to be able to pull out um, multiple rows of data that match a certain criteria. So in my case, uh, I've got a table that you can see here that consists of body fat information. So it's got a uh, date of a test, body weight, and a bunch of skin fold results. And what I have used this particular feature for is across on the right here. So I can pick a name from the drop down box and it'll pull out all of the results that match this particular person, regardless of whether there's four, five, or ten data sets. What I've then added on to it is uh, a dynamic chart that we've done before. But ultimately, the thing that I really want to show you is this index equation. And you can see here, it's got plenty to it, but I'm going to step you through it piece by piece. So I'm just going to nip across to a blank sheet, and I'm going to start from scratch. And so you can see up on the side here, these are the tasks that we're going to go through in this video. If the video gets too long, I'll stop and I'll do part two in terms of making the dynamic chart. But for now, I want to go through the index equation. What we have to start with is we want to create the drop down list. And so I'm going to use a built in feature in Excel called Advanced Filter to do that. And Advanced Filter sits on the data tab. So what I want to do is click on Advanced Filter. Now it's pre-selected this entire table for us. That's not what we want. We simply want to filter column C. So I'm just going to change that to C. I want to check that option that says copy to another location. Just change that. I want to take just the unique records and copy them there. So what it's now done is pasted a list of all the unique names in our table. Now if I just sort that, it's found two Eric Steels, my guess is one of them's got a space after them, which means uh, it saw it as, as different to the previous one. So anyhow, what we've done now, i just tidied that up, is we've got a unique list. So I am going to select it and type athlete names. So we've now got a named range. I'm going to click here, make a drop down box using that named range. Excellent. And this particular uh, equation here to tell us how many records match this selected athlete is useful to, to keep your spreadsheet looking tidy and it's also used in the dynamic range that we use to create the graph. So I'm just going to simply go count if in this list what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it down to something really large simply in case we add a whole lot more data to our spreadsheet. So it's saying now that there are five for Dwight and I know there's a whole bunch for Eric so there we go. That counter is now working. So if we look at our list of tasks we've gone through these ones already. Now before we get into the equation, like I said it's an index equation, 
I just want to have a, a little bit of a revision over what the functions that make up this sort of mega formula do. So index, it's a lookup function, and it's really quite a simple one. It says, tell us the array, and give us a row and column number, and we'll pull out whatever value matches that hit. It's almost like playing Battleship. So the array is here. Pull out whatever is in row 4 and column 4. And we'll do that. Small function is basically saying what is the smallest number in the list? What is the second smallest number in the list? So if I were to select that, that's going to tell us the third smallest number in that list. For example, so small and large both work the same way. We need small to make our equation work. Now rows, we've looked at this with regard to helping uh, enter lots of lookup, VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP type equations. Excuse me. Rows simply says how many rows are inside this array. So if I select that many rows, it's going to tell me something like 21. Because there are 21 rows in between rows C2 and C22. What's good about this particular equation is that I can use it as a counter. So if I do this, it's going to tell us one, because there's only one row between B14 and B14. But if I lock this and leave the other one unlocked, as I drag it down, it's going to increment for us. And that's how it can become very useful during uh, the um, preparation of large formulas, in particular lookup formulas. Row is even simpler. It tells us what row are we currently in. If I just do open and close brackets, that'll work. It tells us we're in row 13. I could also have clicked on a cell. But just having it open and close brackets is fine. Now, an array is a relatively complicated concept, but to summarize it as simply as I can, an array evaluates a whole lot of data. For example, if you've selected 20 rows, it'll try and evaluate all 20 rows inside the same function. Whereas normally a formula only operates on uh, providing a single answer. And so what we're doing here is we're saying if C2 to C8, which is our main column, equals Alex May, then tell us the row numbers, otherwise leave it blank. And so if I select this part of the equation and use if, hit if not, that evaluates. Pardon me. So if I hit F9 now, what we'll see if I just expand this out is a whole lot of trues and falses. Because it's going through every single row in this entire range that we've selected and it's telling us whether it meets our criteria or not. And now if I select the whole part and hit F9, what it's going to do is tell us just the row numbers that meet our criteria. So 8. 27, 46, 65, and 84. And so if we just check that, column 8, Alex May, column 27, Alex May, etc. So we can tell it's working. So that's an example of how an array formula works. And what we're going to do when we write this formula uh, in a second is we want to have the first line pull out row 8 the second line of the formula pull out row 27, the next line 46, the next line 65, the next line 84. In other words, we're going to use the small function to go through and get the smallest row number 
and then the next smallest, and then the next smallest, and then the next smallest, until it runs out on row numbers that match its criteria. So in this particular case for Alex May, it equals 5, but if we chose a different person, it might equal 2 or 10 for all we know. So, let's get on to this function. Now, I've left these rows here blank because that's where I want to put the graph. So, um, otherwise, I would have shifted it up. But anyhow, what I want to do is start simple. Index. Where is the data that we want to return? In this case, we want to return the date data. So I'm going to start here, and in case we get some extra data, I'm going to expand it out to 500, even though it only currently goes to row 88. And I want to lock the row numbers, but not the column numbers down because we want to be able to drag this formula across to the right and have it automatically update for us. So that's the array. We want to find the first row that meets the criteria that we've selected. So at the moment that's Frank McNamara and the first answer is row 3. So we're going to use the small function because that will find us the first and then the second, and then the third. So, the small function wants an array. Our array is containing another function called if. If a range with all the names in it, equals our selected name. Now you notice I double locked both of these with dollar signs, both row and column. Then what do I want to do? I want to return the row number of that particular name. If it doesn't match our criteria. We don't want to do anything. Sometimes you put a false value in here. I'm just going to do a close bracket because we don't need to worry about that. Now what I really want at the moment is just the smallest one. So I'm just going to put one. And now I should just have to close a few things off. Now when you do an array you have to go control shift enter. So hold control shift down and then hit enter. I'm just going to copy the format from our date column, and there we go. So I just want to do a little bit of auditing, and I know this is actually wrong, but I just want to illustrate a point. This first row with Francis McNamara is row 3, and the date is the 10th of the 1st, but it's, our formula is telling us the 19th. So we won out, and the reason we won out is because there is a title row at the top. So if I simply put minus 1 there, that's going to be perfect. So if you had 2 or 3 title rows, you'd put minus 2 or minus 3. Anyhow, I drag this across. It will update. The formats will be wrong, so I just need to change it to a number. Let's check and see what we've got. Body weight of 70.4, etc. Yep, so that's right. So we don't have to worry too much about the formats as long as we know that it's correct. So we've done that top row just fine. Now, one thing I did in this, which is very, um, it makes the formula work, but it causes you um, problems later, is that I manually typed in one there because I wanted the smallest one. If I did it this way, when I drag it down, I'm going to have to manually, manually go in and change that to 2. And so on. I don't want to have to do that. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use our rows function as my counter. 
remembering to unlock the first row number and leave the second one unlocked. So now, hopefully, if I drag this down, there'll be a few error functions at the moment, but we'll tidy that up in a second. And I'll pull that across, remembering once again to make that a number for me. This is actually working for us, and we've got a few things to tidy up, but it's working just fine. Let's put in it all, and let's try our friend Eric. There we go, it's working just fine. So we've got all the numbers coming out as we want them, using that index array. So what it's doing in this first row is finding the smallest, then the next smallest row, then the next smallest row, and so on, until it runs out of rows that match our criteria. And so I don't like all these errors, and there's a couple of different ways you can get rid of them. The first one, which I use a lot, is just if error. You put a little empty quotes at the end. Okay. Now, that works just fine. But the problem we've got is if we've got a large spreadsheet, and there's a lot going on in it, Something like what we've just done with that if error is going to save, um, it's going to cause quite a lot of calculation to go on every single time we click save. Because what it's doing is it's evaluating this entire part for 500 rows every single time. And we've written this index equation a couple of hundred times just within this little grid here. And because it calculates the entire thing first, and then if it's an error, it leaves it blank. It's doing the whole calculation before it understands that it doesn't need to put the answer. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use our little rows calculation again. So lock one side and leave the other one open. So if the number of rows is greater than the number of records for that person, then do nothing. Otherwise, do this big array formula. And just close off one final bracket at the end now. And so what's good about this is all it's doing is performing this small part of the function before it does the double quotes and only if it's true only if it's false if you like so if only it meets our criteria will it then do the big array and that will save you quite a lot of calculation time oftentimes you're not too worried about that but some of the spreadsheets that I've done I've got a whole truckload of these things and definitely makes a, a big improvement. So there it is, the index array. We've pulled out all the data that we want to pull out and uh, we've got plenty of room so that if, for example, we get a whole lot more data and I'll just cheat by pulling it. another 10 or so for Eric in there. You can see that as long as we've dragged the formulas down far enough, that'll all fill in just fine. So um, if I assume that the maximum number of data points we're going to have is 30, I'll drag this function down 30 rows and, and that one. We've got enough room to expand if, uh, if we're not using this for a couple of years. So uh, I'll follow this video up with part two where I do the graph and I add a second criteria. But uh, thanks for listening. Happy New Year to you, and I'll talk to you soon.